The story of this innovation process began long before the specific work on it started. Once upon a time, in the far, far away land of the United States of America, there was a little girl named Margaret. Margaret E. Knight was born in Maine in 1838, but she was not like the other girls of her time. She liked to play with tools rather than dolls. And she had an almost magical notebook where she drew and calculated her inventions. When Margaret's two brothers wanted a new toy, they would go straight to their sister and ask her to make it. She would design superior kites and sleds for them, and it is said that she was famous for her kites, and her sleds were the envy of the town's boys. Sadly, Margaret lost her father at a very young age, and their brothers and mother went to work at a textile mill. At first, Margaret went to school, but when she turned 12, she also started working at the mill to earn money for the family. Not unlike Cinderella, Margaret toiled for paltry wages from before dawn until dusk, in an unregulated, dangerous factory setting. This was during the Industrial Revolution, and even if the work was dangerous, there was also plenty of it. Margaret saw this brave new world as her laboratory, and she bounced from factory to factory, learning about cutting-edge technology from the factory floor. This way, she learned about, for example, upholstery, photography, and engraving. As the clever girl she was, Margaret saw the benefits and the limitations of the exciting machines she encountered on the assembly lines. After the US Civil War, which ended in 1865, Margaret went to work at a paper bag factory. At the factory, she got hands-on experience and became acquainted with the process of making bags from flat sheets of paper. Sources seem to differ if she and her co-workers used rudimentary machines or if the folding process was done entirely by hand. However, everyone now seems to agree that the paper bags themselves were impractical as the design was similar to today's envelopes. Can you imagine standing at a supermarket checkout with large envelopes trying to fit bulky items such as toilet paper, oranges and canned food into clumsy envelope resembling paper bags that could not stand on their own? Furthermore, Margaret was terribly bored by the monotonous work at the paperback factory. So she wondered if there wasn't a more efficient way of completing the task and even improving the bags in the process. According to engineering historian Henry Petrosky, manufacturing paper bags of all kinds had become a competitive business and more than one inventor had been working on new ways to produce them more quickly, more efficiently, and more reliably. Margaret also joined this quest. She dug out her old sketchbook and brought it to work at the factory. By day, Margaret secretly made notes on the factory production processes. By night, she made drawings and models in the boarding house where she lived. She sketched ideas and iterated slowly making progress that culminated in complete plans with precise dimensions for every aspect of the machine. Finally, after six months, Margaret had a working wooden prototype of her paper bag machine. Margaret thought fondly back to the days of making sleds for her brothers 
as that had taught her the necessary skills to build the wooden model. The machine cut, folded, and glued flat bottom paper bags, so the bags could hold more than previous bag designs and were able to stand on their own. The bag design was not revolutionary itself, as artisans had occasionally made them, but the machine could mass produce flat bottom paper bags, making them readily available. One day, Margaret brought the prototype to the factory and started using it to produce paper bags. The factory boss saw her and angrily asked her what she was doing. Margaret showed him the machine, and when he saw the efficiency of the apparatus producing flawless paper bags in an improved design, he urged Margaret to go to the city to seek a machinist to help her make the device sturdier. The machinist and customers present in the shop were amazed by Margaret's machine and that a woman had made it. After a demonstration, the machinist agreed to build a more refined metal prototype. When Margaret returned a few weeks later to pick up her metal prototype, she was surprised to see the same customer in the shop again. And this was not the last time Margaret saw that particular customer. When she was 12 and working at the textile mill with her family, Margaret had witnessed an accident as a steel shuttle flew off one of the looms and stabbed a nearby worker. The preteen soon invented a device to improve factory safety, which other factories also adopted. At the time, Margaret was too young to hold a patent, but this taught her an important lesson. This time, as a final part of the innovation process, Margaret wanted to patent her paper bag machine. As she knew that this would be difficult for a woman, she spent months perfecting the sketches to improve her chances. But her application was nevertheless denied, as a Charles F. Annan already had the exclusive rights to a similar machine. Margaret remembered the machinist calling the reappearing customer in the shop Charles and became furious as she realized that he had stolen her designs. Around 35 years earlier, the US had become the first country to introduce a modern patent institution with courts to resolve disputes. Margaret spent much of her hard-earned savings on a quality lawyer and took Annan to court. Annan argued that no woman would be capable of designing such a machine. While Margaret presented a large stack of sketches showing iterations and how the design had evolved. Moreover, her former boss and the machinist witnessed on her behalf. The court ruled in Margaret's favor, annulling Annon's patent. In July 1871, Margaret was granted the patent on her paper bag machine, leading to her co-founding the Eastern Paper Bag Company. In her life, Margaret held many patents. When she died in 1904, at the age of 76, she had never married and did not have children, but held 26 patents for, amongst others, a machine cutting shoe soles and improvements to car engines. She also patented further improvements to the paper bag machine. Today, a small-scale, albeit fully functional patent model is exhibited at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History. Further developed designs of Margaret's machine still produce the flat bottom paper bags we use today to carry our groceries home. Margaret's story teaches us that innovation can come from unexpected places and is not necessarily predetermined by, for example, educational level. An ugly duckling can become a beautiful swan, a frog can become a handsome prince, and a relatively uneducated woman could become an inventor of machinery more than a century ago. The end.